Turn with me to John chapter 15. We'll read verses 1 through 8. John 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my, fa my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean, because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the, in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be, be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. And so, prove to be my disciples. Do you have a song for us today? Yeah. And today you're singing number 91 for those that are watching on the live stream. Thank you. 
it's always nice to hear the praise of God in, in many languages. Yeah. And I enjoy every single song that you guys share. <laughs> Thank you so much. Last week, I spoke about stories. I encouraged us to embrace the tool of imagination while considering story. Story is a powerful tool because it can unlock the power of our mind. But there's another tool that can be used that will un unlock perception as well, and that's illustration. Illustration is powerful because it's a tool of deep meaning. If you were to take a trip to the Nelson Atkin, Atkins Museum of Art here in downtown Kansas City, we would be graced with many illustrations. Each of, those, of these works of art are attempts of human beings to, to speak of or to show us a deeper meaning. Some of those works of art points us to, to, to God, and some of them show us something about us or the world that we live or have lived in. We use these tools of illustration to give something tangible to concepts that are abstract. Our emotions are real but they're abstract. We can't put our fingers on them. We, we, we don't even always know, understand or know what they're doing, but they're very real. Even knowledge is abstract. We can know, but we cannot really grasp or gain wisdom until we can make that that we know into something tangible. And that's what wisdom is. Jesus uses story and illustration to express truth in ways that can move the abstract into the tangible. And Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch, that make, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. What a wonderful illustration. And if you look at the screen, this is one of the illustrations that somebody in, I don't know when it was made, but this is one expression of what this, this passage means. And if you notice, all 12 disciples are there on the branches and Jesus is in the center. Why do I call this a wonderful illustration? A vineyard is one of the most labor and financially intensive agricultural crops that can be grown. Agriculture is one of the oldest professions in the world, and agricultural hist historians would say that the invention of agriculture is what promoted the rise of civilization. When human beings began to domesticate plants and animals, they emerged from the lifestyle of nomadic hunting and gathering and began to settle in villages and in cities. They could settle because they no longer had to follow the wandering wild herds, but they could manage their food supply. Our ancestors painstakingly sought after plants that were edible and they gathered seeds and tubers and they placed them in the ground and they found the animals that could be tamed and they learned how to keep and train those animals so that those animals could provide the nourishment that we need and over time they were able to develop a life and a lifestyle around these plants and animals and they were able to obtain a surplus of food and because of that surplus, economies emerged. 
because others could move away from producing food and they could specialize in other aspects of life that their personal skills could be used to a greater extent and they could trade their skills for the surplus of produce that others made. You can sit down if you want after. The concept of this emergence is shown in the fullest sense in the vineyard. The vineyard, unlike the grass-based crops like wheat or corn, is one of length. It takes time to establish a vineyard. Wheat yields a crop every year. You plant the seed, it grows, it produces fruit, and it dies all within one year. The vine and the orchards take multiple years to yield a crop. According to the University of California, to establish a vineyard, you will invest at least, at least $10,000 an acre. How many of you have that amount of money just laying around that you can just go and plant a vineyard? I can tell you, I don't. And the article that I read goes on to say that you will wait four to five years to get a crop. Just a crop, four to five years. So you invest $10,000 and then you wait for five years. And that's just a crop, not a, a crop that will give you any extra money. It'll take another year after that first crop to get your first vintage or enough fruit that would contribute to the most profitable use of grapes, which is the production of wine. Those that invest in a vineyard have enough surplus in the production of food that they do not have to worry about feeding their family or their community. And they can take that land out of production and risk it for the production of the fruit of a vine. And the land used for the vineyard may not see a positive income for over 10 years. So all that investment that you made you start making money after five years, but you don't get positive return until after 10 years. The vineyard is something that's lasting. It's, it's long suffering and it's a great illustration. Jesus uses agricultural illustrations often. He uses them because the culture during the first century was primarily agriculturally based. And the world, by large, has been agriculturally based until the Industrial Revolution. So these teachings, based on agriculture, provided a great deal of tangible wisdom for the people. Today, especially among those in urban settings like we are in, these lessons kind of become cryptic or a mystery. And the farther we travel away from the agricultural roots of civilization, we begin to lose that knowledge. And we have to strive to grasp the understanding and the knowledge that was once freely available. So we have to learn that it takes $10,000 to establish a vineyard before we can even begin to understand what, what Jesus is talking about. But the vineyard is a wonderful illustration of life with God because it shows the reality that life is hard. To have a fulfilled life that Jesus promises takes time. It requires labor. And unfortunately, pain and suffering is often necessary as well. Jesus says that he is the true vine. We are not the vine. You can grow a vine from a seed and it can take root and grow, but that's not the method that is used by vineyards. The most common method of, of, 
establishing a vineyard is a method called grafting. And this process requires two types of grapevines. One is selected for the roots, and the other is selected for the branches or the fruit that it will bear. Those that grow grapes choose the rootstock carefully because that is the portion that is in the ground. They diligently study the soil and the environmental conditions when they choose that rootstock because if the rootstock cannot become established in the soil, the vineyard is lost. The rootstock of the vine is where the vineyard begins. It is the root of the vine that produces the foundation and the nutrients for the fruit. When Jesus says that he is the true vine, he is saying that he is the rootstock. He is the life-giving source that can overcome the harsh conditions in the soils that we face. The rootstock is chosen based on the conditions of the soil. Not all grapevines will grow in the soil that you des desire to establish your vineyard in. The vine might make the best grapes, but if it can't take root in the soil, it's worthless. And even though the rootstock vines may be able to take root well in a given soil, it might not produce the best fruit. So that's why they have to use grafting. Jesus says that he is the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. I want us to consider that illustration. The vine that is Christ is, is the rootstock. The vine dresser, which is the father, is the one that goes through and he trims the vines. He's the most important person in the vineyard. I said before that grapes that are pr produced commercially, they do not grow them from a seed like wheat, but they use the process called grafting. The first component of this is to have that rootstock or the foundation of the vine, but the vine dresser doesn't want the rootstock to bear the fruit. That is not why that vine was chosen. He chose that vine for the roots, not for the branches. Jesus came to this world for one specific purpose. He came to provide or establish the means of life. He came to overcome the greatest challenge of life. Our greatest challenge is the wages of sin. And sin is a blight that affects all of life, and it will be our undoing. We cannot overcome the wages of sin on our own. If we try to root our own, on our own, the blight of sin will kill the roots. And we will ne never be able to bear the fruit that we were created to bear. This is where the vine dresser comes in. The vine dresser knows the vine. The dresser knows what vine can take root and what will not. The vine dresser plants the rootstock into the soil and allows the root to become established. And when that vine begins to grow, the dresser comes by with a branch from the vine of the variety of desired fruit. And he places that branch into the rootstock. This is a, a, per, uh, a process of precision. It requires momentary suffering from both the rootstock and the branch because both are cut. The dresser removes the branch from the, the branches from the rootstock. And this will render that vine unable to bear fruit because it lacks the leaves and the branches. But the branch comes from a different vine, and that branch was removed from that vine, and it was that it once was part of, 
it is separated from the life-giving roots or it dies to itself. And the dresser will carefully peel away the bark and he whittles the inner portion of the vine in such a way that the branch will fit into the rootstock. And then the bark or the skin is placed over that, those cuts and they are allowed to grow together. The branch is supplied with water and nutrients from the root and the roots are supplied with energy from the branch's leaves and together they produce fruit. I am the true vine, Jesus says. And my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because, the wor because, of, the wor because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. The word abide is the key to this verse. It means to remain or to endure. And in some cases it, it can mean remain undisturbed. When a vine dresser makes a graft, they will carefully wrap that wound that they inflicted and, th and they let it remain undisturbed for a while so that the two plants will grow together and heal together. If that graft fails, the dresser will, will have to cut the vine back again and make another attempt. But if the branch abides in the vine, it will grow and it will bear fruit. This is what Jesus means when he says abide. We remain in the vine. We allow the rootstock to provide the foundation and the, and the nourishment for us. And we supply the roots with the energy that make the roots grow stronger. We remain together. We do not allow the cuts that were made to join us to cause death but we remain together, and together we bear fruit. We must abide. If we are grafted into the vine, into the vine and attempt to remain independent or in our old nature, we will die. The reason we were grafted is because we cannot live on, on our own in this environment. And this is what John means in, in his letter that he wrote that we read earlier. He loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We could, cannot survive unless Christ took the role to cover or to cancel the blight of sin. We must abide or remain in that rootstock if we are going to survive in the soils of life, teeming with the disease causing sin. The vine dresser found it fitting to place us in this time and place at this moment in the vine's history. He needs the fruit that we can bear right here now. And he began that process many years ago. I mentioned before that it can take years before the vineyard is, is established. Four to five years for the first harvest, harvest, and an additional year for the fruit to begin to fulfill its purpose. And 10 to 13 years before the fruit begins to provide enough fruit to overcome that initial investment, God has a plan and a purpose for us. As the vine dresser, that process was initiated many years in the past. And all along, during those years, God has been pruning us. The act of pruning 
is the removal of excess. The removal of excess branches from the vine. And the purpose of this is to leave just one singular vine dedicated to produce the most fruit possible. When there is only one branch, all the energy produced by the leaves is dedicated to the roots and the fruit, and the, not the production of additional branches. And there are times when the vine dresser wants a branch to be produced so that another graft can be made, but even then it is given, it is up to the vine dresser not the vine, to make that call. And that branch will eventually be pruned from that main branch, and it will be grafted into the vine again. And we are called to abide. We can do nothing if we do not abide. If we think that we can do something apart from the true vine, that will be pruned away. Because it has nothing to do with the purpose of the vine dresser. Yet Jesus says, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. How does that fit into this illustration? We have to abide first. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers and is and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. When we abide, we are joined with Christ for, this, for a shared purpose. Our will is united with His, and those wills are directed by the work of the vine dresser, who is the Father. When we abide, the things that we ask are like the sugars produced through the process of, of photosynthesis in the leaves. When we abide, those things are, are dedicated to produce fruit in the maintenance of the roots. When we abide, those are the things that we are asking for. Our purpose is not focused on ourselves, but focused on either the establishment of greater roots or more fruit. Those are the things that God says, if you ask, it will be given to you. It's not what we want, but it's what God wants. Abide, remain, stay focused on the, the singular purpose set before you. You are grafted into the vine at this place that you are, at this time, for one thing. That one thing is your calling, your ministry, your entire purpose of existence. God needs you to abide where you are under his caring hand to produce the fruit of his direction. For years, God has been working and tending your branch for this purpose so that when the time is right, you will produce the purpose or proposed fruit needed but this can only occur if we abide and remain when we stand where we are in Christ and stop working against him that is when the fruit can be produced look around this meeting everyone you see here is here for a purpose. Everyone is here for a reason. Every one of us has been grafted into the rootstock of Christ for a reason only fully known by God the Father. But as we abide and remain, we work together to bear fruit. Our stories and our illustrations of life add energy to the branch and the roots to strengthen the vine that we are together. Our devotion and our sacrifices all together make the vine stronger and the fruit sweeter. And our unity 
to that singular purpose will yield profit to God's economy. Will we abide? Will we remain in the root of Christ? Will we allow God to direct and prune our lives so that we can participate in the harvest set before us? Let us now enter into this time of open worship and communion in the manner of friends. Let us abide in the root of Christ and flourish under the tender hand of God our Father so that we can participate in his glory. And if the Spirit of God is leading you to speak, please share with us. And if not, let us just enjoy his presence among us. Let us pray. Go now and love one another, because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ. And like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.